And do all, do all your um, like um, twenty second sphere abilities of manifestation and you know bilocation all of that only come when you get into a state of it one minute. Oh, with, with your soulmate, yes. Oh, yeah. I thought with God. Oh no, with the one minute with God occurs in the eight sphere. Yeah. So that's the half of the soul now in one minute with God, but the one minute, the one minute with your soul mate mm. occurs in the twenty second sphere. So in between the 8th sphere and the 22nd sphere, there's a lot of truths, right, <coughs> to learn about love, about divine love. And, uh, but none of them are painful. You're asking about manifestation, are you? No, I'm, I'm talking about how, like, over in India, the, the avatars have the ability to, you know, bring people back from the dead and, and be in contact with tens of thousands of people simultaneously and help them in all different ways at all different times. All I've got to do is call on them. And well, firstly, you can't bring someone back from the dead. <coughs> well, if the cord isn't broken. If the cord isn't broken. Right. So if you're talking about the cord, the silver cord being broken from the spirit body and the material body, then nobody can bring anybody back from the dead in any circumstance. Right. So if people are bringing back people from the dead, it's just a spirit, like it is a spirit who's doing all of these things through them because of their mediumistic connection. And what's happening is they're just manifesting things or doing things in a metaphysical way, which any six-sphere spirit can do. So... Mm. What's the purpose? Uh, but what's the purpose? That? Like, in the end, all it does is create fascination. Mm -hmm. But does it does it help you grow in divine love? Really, you know, it might give you a bit of faith, maybe. You know, so that the way they look at it is, that, oh, we're giving people faith on earth that this is real. But the truth the truth is that it's not real yet. Like they, you know, it's looking like the person on earth is doing it, isn't it? But the truth is that the person on earth isn't doing it, because the person on earth if they didn't have the spirit connection, is not in the six sphere state to do it. You follow me? Yeah. So it's actually the six sphere spirit who's doing it, <laughs> making it look like the person on earth doing it, to give you some faith. But it's all, like to me, it's all a bit false, isn't it, really? Yeah. <coughs> like really, really, what is it doing? It's really creating a fictional state mm. that you believe in. Mm. I'd much rather just say the truth mm. of what's going on. Mm. And let's get to the one minute condition, and all of us can do those things, and it won't be fictional. It'll be mm. actually really you through your desire and your passion, and your mm. you will be doing it. But and you won't need a six fear spirit to help you do it. Virtually every so called spiritual experience that, that is written about in the literature and, and longed for by people are all spirit influence and from the six sphere. And, and well, not just the six sphere, a lot of them from lower spheres as well. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, yeah. All healing that happens now is all, all related to spirits doing the healing. Right? There's no one on earth currently healing with, th because of being in an one condition with God in divine love. They are all just spirits. So people on earth are in a good mediumistic condition, getting energy through a spirit. The spirit's using the ectoplasm of the person to heal the other person. That's what's going on. There's nothing wrong with it. And, and particularly if, the, if someone's getting healed. But when I say nothing wrong, our definitions of what's right and wrong change on the divine love path as well. Mm. Because on the divine love path, the person who's getting healed is already in the state where they're not healed. They've got an issue because of what? Because an emotion that they're not... Now, if I heal them, what are they going to think? They don't have to do anything. They don't have to do anything. All right? So can you see that that creates a problem, doesn't it, in a way, on the divine path? It's dishonest. It's sort of dishonest in a way, and that's why God doesn't heal them. See, the question people need to be asking themselves is, why doesn't God heal me? The answer is really quite simple. When you're ready to deal with the emotion that caused the illness, God will heal you at that instant, and you won't need a spirit to help him. He can heal you straight at that time, as soon as you're willing to deal with that emotion. You follow me? So this is how God wants to connect with all of his children. Why would he want to connect through some person in the Middle East or some person in India to heal a heap of people and have thousands of people paying thousands of dollars to get there? Why would God want that? God wants to love all of his children, doesn't he? Mm. So what does he want? He wants all of you to experience this instantaneous healing that is possible when you're willing to deal with the causal emotion that creates the issue. That's what he wants. So, so what about your healings in the first century, healing lepers and stuff like that? The only persons I healed in the first century were willing to deal with the emotions at that moment. Mm -hmm. 
So like, uh, there's an account in the Bible that's a fairly accurate account of my healing ten blind men. And nine of them just ran off and did other things and weren't even thankful. And the tenth one was thankful, right? Now, what actually happened was that all of them, before they were being healed, all of them were in a state where they wanted to deal with the emotion of why they had blindness. All of them were in that state. Now, some of it was parental emotion, some of it was related to their life and so forth. Now, all of them were in that state at that time. But as soon as you heal someone, often a person thinks, what would you think? You get healed. I don't need to worry about that emotion Ooh, anymore. Yeah. Now yeah. you're starting to feel like, maybe I don't need to worry about that emotion, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, <laughs> and so, so a person's emotional state changes just in the act of getting healed sometimes too. Sometimes their, their emotional state actually becomes worse mm. in that they become less thankful mm. Right? Other times they become more thankful. It just depends on what's going to happen and what their choices are. Now, when you're healing a person, you're not responsible for the choices they make after you've healed them. You're only responsible, if you could say that you're responsible at all, for their choices that they're making right now. So that's why in some cases I did heal people in the first century, but afterwards they showed a thankless attitude. That didn't mean that at the time that they're being healed they showed that. Often it was afterwards that they, you know, they felt, oh, that was easy, you know, oh, I've got my life back now. Mm. Uh, for many of them, particularly the lepers, and um, that was the case, you know, you imagine, you imagine being, you know, 20 or 30 years with leprosy, mm. being like in a constant state of uncleanness under Israelite law. Nobody would touch you even, so you hadn't been touched for 30 years, imagine that, mm. except by another leper, the only person who could touch you. You imagine being in that state and then all of a sudden being healed. Now you'd really want to get out of that state and you'd be really wanting to address the emotion, wouldn't you, at that time that you had the prospect of being healed, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. But imagine you're instantly healed. What would you do then? <coughs> you see, a lot of them said, oh, I've got my <coughs> life back now. Mm -hmm. I can go and do, like, how many of them, for 30 years they haven't had sex, many of them. So what do you reckon is the next thing they do? Right? Or for 30 years they haven't been able to be with their mates or, you know, eat, eat a meal with people. What are they? Do? So they become so engrossed in that that they forget what just happened. And that's really easy to occur. Does the condition come back then if they haven't dealt with the emotion? Certainly. Did all those nine blind people... Oh, it depends what caused the emotions. And sometimes it would be a parent-based thing, where they're blind at birth, when if that's the case, very much a parent, so that wouldn't return. But it just depends on what created their blindness in the first place. So there's many illnesses with people that I healed at the time, completely healed, but years later they developed the same condition and died. Yeah. Do you believe there's an emotional cause behind all disease? Yes. Yeah, there is an emotional cause behind every single disease, every single illness, every accident that happens to you, every cut that you get, every, like, absolutely everything that goes on in your life, there's an emotional cause inside of you. That's pretty overwhelming. <laughs> you are completely responsible for everything you create.